Hello everyone and welcome back to the Denver Broncos franchise. To get this week started, I did a couple things while not recording. Those things being, I did cut a couple wide receivers. I cut Philip Dorsett because he was taking up like $2.8 million and he wasn't playing. And I cut Anthony Schwartz because he also wasn't playing. I gave him a chance and I think Montreal Washington just outperformed him. So Montreal Washington earned that sort of third wide receiver spot. So I have signed Kayshawn Booty, but I signed him off of the Patriots practice squad. He was just sitting there up for grabs 21 67 overall on the Patriots practice squad I like him a lot so I picked him up and I signed Antoine Green off of the Lions practice squad not quite as young not quite as good but a little bit faster they are wearing number 86 and 85 respectively so Booty will be the wide receiver four. you won't see a ton of him but you might see some of him and I think he definitely has potential to move up in the future although Marvin Mims I think is obviously just our wide receiver two of the future, maybe our slot guy of the future, whatever, whatever that may be. In the last episode, we did a bunch of scouting and also changed the offensive and defensive schemes. So the offense and defense are going to look a little bit different this week and going forward for the rest of the season. I won't be changing it again. I think bye week was a good time to change it. I think that's something that, you know, a real offense and defense might actually do is just kind of switch things up a little bit at the bye week when you have some time off. We still cannot negotiate with anyone. I don't know when my cap room will be back. I'm still at negative 26, and there's a lot of guys here that I want to re-sign, namely Devin Bush. A Devin Bush, I want to be my middle linebacker for like the next five years, probably. Okay, and now hear me out. I kind of want to re-sign Ryan Tannehill on a one-year, like tiny, tiny offer. Like I, I would go team-friendly just because one, he's going to have the mentor tag next season, I believe. So if we do have a rookie quarterback or a young quarterback off of like free agency or something, it would be great to have that mentor tag because that gives that quarterback additional XP to if we can't find a quarterback to be the guy for next year, Ryan Tannehill is a decent starter. He might retire though. I mean, he is 35. I would make him this offer, but I, I can't because of the salary cap. Anyway, let's not waste a ton of time this week. Let's upgrade these players, get into weekly strategy and get into our matchup against the Bills. Jerry Judy has an upgrade, which is awesome. He's really turning into quite the receiver. I do need to work on his catching and catch in traffic, which is going to be slot. So let's dump some points into that. He obviously is now superstar development, which is great. Oh, he just unlocked an ability slot because he hit 85 as well. So he has energizer. Ball carriers with this ability will replenish a portion of their stamina upon successfully performing any skill move. Ball carriers with this ability will frequently attempt to gain extra yards while being tackled. Players with this ability have a chance to replenish their stamina once per play when it is half depleted. We have two stamina recovery ones. Okay, well, I got him to superstar, so I'm picking his abilities. I like this grab and go. After securing a rack catch, which I do most of the time with Judy, ball carriers with this ability can quickly shift momentum change direction and turn the corner without sacrificing speed i like reach for it reach for it's always good we do kind of dump it off to jerry judy a lot so i think short and elite is probably good so i'm happy with these superstar abilities riley moss has an upgrade i sort of forgot he's on the team i feel like we never see him he is terrible in coverage so let's improve his man to man all right let's get into weekly strategy and get into the game against the bills obviously josh allen is their star quarterback i'm gonna defend the short pass i think that that worked okay against mahomes offensively oh shoot they have von miller bro the former bronco yeah we might have to do blitz counter honestly all right we've simulated training we'll take a look and see if anyone is injured for the upcoming matchup looks like no no injuries fantastic also it's been a while since we took a look at the league standing so we'll go ahead and do that now the browns are six and two the ravens are six and three the Bengals are five and three and the steelers are two and six jags are four and four colts are four and five Titans are three and five and Texans are two and six bills are eight and one in the AFC East the Pats are six and three the Dolphins struggling at four and five and the Jets are three and five Chiefs are eight and one the Chargers are four and four the Raiders are three and six and of course the Broncos are two and six so it's the Chiefs division to lose at this point NFC North the Vikings are six and three the Lions are four and four the Packers are four and four the Bears are three and six in the NFC South the Bucks lead the way at five and three the Falcons are five and four the Panthers are four and four and the Saints are four and five this could still go anybody's way in the NFC East the Giants are six and three the Cowboys are five and three the Eagles are five and four and the Commanders are three and six and then finally, in the NFC West, the Niners barely leading the way at five and three. The Rams are four and five. The Seahawks all the way down at two and six, and the Cardinals one and eight. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into this game against the Bills in Buffalo today. 
to take on the Bills. We've got a couple interesting matchups as Pat Sertan will be taking on that man, Stefan Diggs, who had a huge game last week. It's a new look Broncos team today. We'll see how they do. The kick beater is wiggling. Did the game get an update and the wind is actually affecting kicks again? Because that would be nice. Because I believe the wind was not affecting kicks before as we're underway here in Buffalo. Josh Allen and the Bills offense will take the field for the first time today. We'll take a look at his stats on the season. 25 touchdowns, only three picks. Didn't he throw three picks in the game opener in real life? Turns out Josh Allen going to probably win MVP with those numbers today. Like I said, a little bit of a new look defense. We're in a 4-3 instead of a 3-4 now. And Dawson Knox makes the catch across the middle. The Bills have six. Got a new defensive formation, a new offensive formation. Everything's new here in the Broncos franchise this week. As Allen will look to throw again and finds his target. That's Gabe Davis down at the 37. Makes it first and 10. What can Allen do now? From the 37. It's going to be a handoff and breaking a tackle and getting a first down is Harris. Down to the 48. Another first down practically to midfield already. Go the Bills. And on first and 10, it's another handoff to Damian Harris. And he's brought down by Caden Stearns and Drew Sanders at the 49. A pickup of three. Second down. Bills in the shotgun. As Allen throws quickly, caught, knocked out by Damari Mathis, who is the new cornerback three for the Denver defense. If you're curious, Marquise Goodwin is on the Bills now here. Khalil Shakir, they have a really good receiver course. Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Marquise Goodwin, Khalil Shakir, and Justin Shorter. Third down. It would be a big stop here for the Denver defense. Diggs is on Williams instead of Sertan. I keep forgetting to update it, but Sertan on the target. Gabe Davis knocks it incomplete, and the Bills likely to punt this away. A great punt sees us starting with the ball at the five, and that's where Ryan Tannehill and the Denver offense will take over. With updating the playbook, I did update formation subs. We'll be seeing a lot more of Samaj P. Ryan again, but on this play, it's Javante Williams with a pickup of five. Makes it second down from the ten. Like I said, it was a very great punt that pinned us deep. Javante Williams on the carry has good blocks in front of him. User hard cut. That was like a spin move. That wasn't really a hard cut. But either way, a good run for Javante Williams. That brings Samaj P. Ryan into the game. And you can see we're in the pistol. So it is definitely a new offense. P. Ryan gets nothing on this carry. So it'll be second and 10 for the Broncos. And we're going to look to throw here. So we'll find Troutman on the reception. And he's got a pickup of seven. It'll be third and three. Greg Dulcich is back this week. Of course, missed last week due to an injury. Or I guess it would be two weeks ago now if you consider the bye week. On third and three, I'm going to try to run for the first. And we're not going to get it. Only a yard. Matt Milano there on the tackle. It's fourth and two. The Bills offense back on the field. The defense able to force a punt as well. They are currently winning the field position battle as their punt pinned us deep. So now Allen throwing, finds his man, breaks a tackle, and is brought down at the 40. It'll be second and in inches. That's Khalil Shakir. Second and in inches now. Allen throwing quickly for Stephon Diggs, who holds on. K1 Williams still on him. The cornerback matchup should now be by overall, so you should see Sertan on Stefan Diggs all the time, which is a really fun matchup. Damian Harris runs away from Devin Bush and is brought down at the 48. Second down and three for the Bills. From the 48, Allen faking the snap, takes the snap this time, throws quickly, knocked out of Stefan Diggs' hands by Pat Sertan. Third down, can Denver get another stop? Sending a small blitz with Devin Bush. Allen gets the ball off quickly, though, and it's caught by Gabe Davis. He holds on this time. First down, Bills. He's been getting the ball off very quickly. It has been difficult to get any pressure in. On this play, sending a blitz again, and that leaves Dawson Knox wide open. Haven't seen Dalton Kincaid yet. Second and seven from the 36. I'm going to send more heat here. Does not work, but K1 Williams able to break up the pass to Gabe Davis. So maybe it did work a little bit. Bill's obviously well inside of field goal range at the moment. I did turn down the field goal power slider after breaking the record in the last game played. Overthrown for Stephon Diggs. That might have been a touchdown. He had a step on Pat Sertan. Allen missed him. Fourth and seven. The Bill's probably going to kick a field goal. 
They are lined up for that field goal. Looks to be like a 57 yarder. Am I doing my math wrong? It's up. It is good. I, I don't think it was a 57 yarder. I think I did do my math wrong. On first and 10, it's looking to probably be a blitz here. And it is. We'll look for Judy, but it's knocked away. A little underthrown by Tannehill. P. Ryan checks into the game. Second and 10 from the 27. We'll hand it off to him. And he's got a decent carry. Makes it third and three from the 34. Third and three. Can Denver convert? Looking to throw nearly intercepted by Milano. I wanted to dump it off to Javante Williams, but the coverage was really good. Fourth and three. We'll probably punt again. Buffalo will start from their 18 on this next drive. We'll see if we can get a stop again. Allen throws quickly well behind his target incomplete. That makes it second and 10. Harris is in the backfield and the play is being flipped. Sertan following digs wherever he goes. This is why we like to run man coverage. It's a handoff to Harris and Simmons slows him down for Devin Bush to make the tackle. Brings up third down. Third and two. Getting a big stop here from the Broncos. And it's a fake handoff. And, oh my god, Gabe Davis is just wide open. Brought down at the 41, but it's too little too late. Huge pickup for the Bills. This is why I prefer man coverage on this team. As it's an RPO for Stephon Diggs. Caden Stearns makes a great tackle. Pickup of two. One minute left to play here in the first quarter. We're back in man coverage again. Second and eight. Allen to throw. Throws quickly knocked away from Gabe Davis by K1 William. K1 has honestly been a little bit of a shutdown corner so far this year. He's had a couple of bad games, but for the most part, he's been really, really good. Allen throwing. Diggs had a step on PS2. That's going to be a touchdown for the Bills. Diggs beat PS2 off the line. That's all it takes. I mean, Patrick Sertan is a hell of a corner, but Stephon Diggs, still one of the probably the five best receivers in the NFL. Makes him look silly. Allen throws a dot. Touchdown, Bills, and it's going to be 10-0. I've definitely been playing a little bit timid here on offense. And on the carries, Javante Williams. Pickup of four. Javante Williams definitely been better on the ground than Samaje Pirine so far to this point. I'll take a snap again. I tried to cut it back. There was a hole in the middle, and I just missed it. Third and six. This will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Quarter comes to an end. You know, more of the same, really. The Broncos offense struggling and the defense struggling to keep up against these high-powered offenses. Third and six. Tannehill looking for a conversion here. Going to be throwing and looking for Dulcich. Able to hold on. And it's going to be a first down for the Broncos. Fresh set of downs. Denver moving the ball a little bit, at least. This is an RPO, but I think I'm just... Oh my god, I threw it by accident, but whatever, it's a pickup of five. Second and five now for the Broncos after the interesting little play that just happened. I'm just going to throw this away. The coverage was so good. I think whoever I throw that to, it's getting deflected, intercepted, whatever it may be. Third down and five. Tannehill looking to throw, looking for Washington, who doesn't put both hands on it. And it falls to the turf, fourth and five. Once again, the Bills take back over. This has been tough to watch offensively for Denver. Hopeful for a stop as Caden Stearns pushes Dawson Knox out of bounds. Second down and four. As it has just been easy peasy for this team to move the ball as the tackle is broken by Dawson Knox. And up to the 37. First and 10 now. Allen to throw again. Gosh, these teams only throw the ball. And he overthrows Stephon Diggs. Second down. Nine and a half minutes left to play here in the half. Allen will hand off to Harris. Zach Allen makes a disruption in the backfield. And then eventually gets back in the play to make the tackle. It'll be third and seven. Denver looking to get a stop and get the ball back. Third down, intercepted by Fabian Moreau, looking to earn that third corner spot back. He might have a pick six here, and he does. Denver, touchdown, Fabian Moreau lost his third CB job to Damari Mathis, but maybe just earned it back. Moreau, pick six off of Josh Allen, a huge play, and the only points now on the board for the Broncos. Allen looking for Davis, and Moreau just jumped the route. First and 10 from the 25, the Denver defense keeping the game alive, really. 
That is a huge blow to the Bills' momentum. Allen to throw again. Caden Stearns almost comes down with a pick of his own, knocks it away. Second down now. Allen not being very careful with the football. Throws quickly for Diggs, but knocked away by PS2. Third and long. Devin Bush is lined up on Stefan Diggs. I'm calling a timeout. That is ridiculous. Why does that continue to happen? I decided to go into cover three in a zone just to be safe. We shall see. Devin Bush was lined up on Stefan Diggs, and that just wasn't going to fly for me. Oh, my God. That was almost another pick six for Fabian Moreau. Honestly, Josh Allen lucky he missed the throw. Goes incomplete, and Denver will take over. Broncos have the ball at the 40 after the Keaton Mitchell return. And we'll go to Javante Williams, but it doesn't get very far. Matt Milano brings him down at the 41. Second down and nine. Denver to throw. Finding Dulcich quickly. There's There was a blitz coming. And he's got a first down. First and 10 from the 49. It's a handoff to Javante. Matt Milano makes the wrap, wrap up tackle. Ben Powers couldn't hit the block. Makes it second down. And we'll be looking to throw again. Honestly, just dump it off to Jo. Oh, that's P. Ryan actually, not Javante, and he doesn't get very much. Empty set for Tannehill. He'll be looking to throw here, and honestly, just try it like an arm punt. He does not have the strength to make that throw on the run. It's fourth and eight. Bills take back over from the twenty. Again, the Broncos' offense just been unable to do anything to this point. Damian Harris on the carry. He's got a lot of running room to the left side. Devin Bush. Slows him down. Baron Browning finishes the tackle. Wonder if they'll be running the ball more now with Josh Allen struggling a little bit. First and 10, it's Damian Harris, and that's Devin Bush again on the tackle. A great play from the young linebacker. Second and nine from the 34. Allen will be throwing this time, and a different Allen in the backfield. And that is Marquise Goodwin on the reception. It's going to be third and five for the Bills. Can the Broncos defense get another stop? Baron Browning is supposed to be in coverage over here. As that's going to be caught and then punched out. K1 Williams breaks up the pass to Gabe Davis. And it's fourth down Bills. After the phenomenal Keaton Mitchell return, Denver has good starting field position. Tannehill will be throwing here. Has Marvin Mims, who cannot keep it in bounds. Second and two. Second down now, and we'll go to the run game. Javante Williams falls forward and has the first. First and 10 from the 44. Tannehill looking to throw. Looking for Dulcich, who's wide open there on the left. Stays in bounds. Gets pushed out at the 29. First down again for Denver. Jerry Judy been quiet so far today. So I'm going to lob this for Williams, and that is a tough catch to make. I completely forgot, by the way, that person in coverage was Alex Singleton. We traded Alex Singleton to the Bills earlier this season. So he gets blocked on that play, and a great run from Tyler Beatty. We had the two-minute warning, and Denver in prime position to score. Tyler Beatty was in the game there, I guess because everyone lost seven stamina from me getting XP during the bye week. So everyone's a little tired. Look for Judy in the end zone. Comes down with it. Touchdown Broncos. 13 to 10. Jerry Judy making the spectacular catch. This is what we need him to do just to be a target in the red zone, honestly. Comes down with it. Denver takes the lead before the half. Obviously, we did leave Buffalo with a ton of time. 14 to 10 Denver, but it could easily be 17 14 by the time halftime actually rolls all around. Josh Allen throws another interception. It's Justin Simmons. And he's down at the 17. That is just a terrible throw from Josh Allen. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And Denver is going to have a chance to extend this lead before the half. Cross body back across the field. I mean, just well behind his target, which I think was. Dawson Knox and is just right into the open arms of Justin Simmons. Well, the defense is really coming up clutch today as Denver takes over again from the 17. It's a handoff to Javante Williams. Can't break the tackle, but does have a pickup of eight. Second and two. We're going to look for P. Ryan in the end zone. Drops it and it falls incomplete. Gave him a chance. Couldn't make the grab. Makes it third down. Probably just looking for Dulcich here, just to get the first down yardage. And that's where we'll go, and he's able to hold on. It's going to be a first down from the two, a minute left to play. First and goal from the two. It's really kind of like the two and a half. And we'll hand it off to Samaje Pirine. 
Falling forward does not get into the end zone down at the one. Javante Williams checks into the game. And we'll try this again. Second and goal from the one. Javante Williams gets no blocking and is brought down at the two by Alex Singleton. 25 seconds left to play. It's third and goal. Denver wanting the touchdown here, obviously. Looking for Judy knocked away by Alex Singleton. We will settle for the field goal here as it does put us up by a touchdown. But, you know, obviously wishing one of those run plays had gotten in. That was really good defense, honestly, on that passing play. First and 10, 15 seconds on all of the timeouts for Buffalo. I mean, we've seen big plays before. It could happen again. It's going to be a handoff to Harris, who has a big run down at the 35. They do burn a timeout. 11 seconds left to play. Looks like they're probably passing now, maybe looking to get into field goal range. 11 seconds. It's a draw play for Harris, who has another decent run. Is down at the 41, and they burn another timeout. Five seconds. I mean, they could get one play that gets them into field goal range, I guess, if they're throwing, which they are. And he throws to Knox, who does get out of bounds, but the clock did hit zero and will head to the half. The Broncos up 17 to 10 on the Buffalo Bills at halftime. It's kind of been just mistake-free football from the Broncos. The offense has not looked very good, but the defense has bailed them out a ton. At the halftime report, obviously we can see all of the scores. Uh, any interesting one, Pittsburgh, who was really struggling, beat Green Bay. The Ravens totally blew out the Browns. The Patriots killed the Colts. The Chargers barely beat the Lions. Washington beats Seattle. Some interesting ones. Arizona beats Atlanta, who is trying to win that division. Denver does start with the ball here in the second half. And it would be huge to go up 24 to 10. So we'll see if we can punch something into the end zone as Javante has a decent carry to get us started or pick up a four. Samaj P. Ryan checks into the game. And from the 29 on second and six, It'll be a run play to him, cuts it back to the middle and has a first down, down at the 38. First down as Javante checks back into the game. It'll be a run for him, can't break the tackle, down at the 38, no gain. Makes it second and 10 from the 38. We are looking to throw here inaccurate from Tannehill, looking for Montrell Washington. Third and 10, we have been horrendous on third downs this year. See if that can change with this play as we'll look for Marvin Mims. It's straight to the safety. I should have sent Jerry Judy on a streak and maybe that works. Instead it's fourth and 10, lucky it's not picked. The Bills take over for the first time here in the second half, looking to tie the game. Obviously we kind of squandered the opportunity, starting with the ball here in the second half. Allen throwing, caught by Diggs, pushed down by PS2, it's a first down. Only 50% completion on the day for Allen and of course two turnovers is not ideal. First and 10 from the 38. He is throwing. Throws quickly knocked away by Pat Sertan. So it's second and 10. Allen really not having a good day today. See if he can turn that around on this play. As he's going to take off to run. Frank Clark can't make the tackle and he's able to throw it away. Ooh, Frank Clark missed the opportunity for a big sack. Third and 10. Can the Denver defense make another stop? From the 38, Allen takes a snap and will be throwing here. Throws quickly for Diggs, and it is caught down at the 46. Another first down. First down from the 46 as the Broncos are unable to force a stop. Allen throwing again, and that's going to be intercepted by Patrick Sertan. Dawson Knox brings him down quickly. The third interception on the day for the Denver defense. And another just errant throw from Josh Allen. We'll look at this again, looking for digs clearly, but I mean, Sertan is just right there in the zone. I mean, it's right to him, and it's just easy pickings. Well, the Broncos defense playing incredible so far today. First and 10 from the 44, the offense takes over, and Javante Williams can't make Matt Milano miss, but does have four yards. Second down from the 48, Tannehill will be throwing here. Looking for Mims, who's got good speed, outrunning his defender, which was Matt Milano, and then brought down by Alex Singleton at the 35. First down from the 35, Pirine in the game, and it's going to him. Trying to break this to the outside. Milano not fast enough. Pirine breaks a tackle. Has a pickup of 9 or 10. It's going to be second and inches. Javante Williams checks back into the game. And on second and inches, we'll go to him. Can't juke out the defender, but does have enough for the first. First down and 10 from the 23. 
As Tannehill will look to throw again. Mims is kind of open, but it falls incomplete as he takes a hit. Second down from the 23. It's a handoff to Javante Williams. Cuts it back up the middle. Has a pickup of seven. It sets up third and three. Honestly, any points for Denver is good here, but would love a touchdown. Third and three. We'll go to Javante, and he's going to be short of the first down. Fourth and inches upcoming. Tyler Beatty has checked into the game. The only run he had earlier was like 12 yards. It was a pretty good run. Fourth and inches. Can he get the first? Yes, he can. Holds onto the ball. Doesn't fumble. First down from the 10 for Denver. Javante Williams evidently a little gassed today from that bye week training. From the 10. First and 10. Technically not goal to go. It'll be a handoff to Javante. And he's brought down by Singleton. Jerry Judy has Matt Milano on him. And it makes me want to go his way. We'll throw a high ball. We'll throw it away to a lucky fan. Trying to throw a jump ball there for Judy because he had a huge, huge advantage. But that did not work. Third and ten. Tannehill takes the snap. It's play action. Throwing. Dulcich. Can he get there? No. Down at the five. He's also injured on the play. We will settle for the field goal again. Uh, it's so annoying to not get these touchdowns. Game could be very different right now. Will Lutz's kick is up and good. It is 20-10. Still a two-possession lead for the Broncos. The Bills take over from the 25. And at this point, can no longer tie the game. It's a handoff to Harris, who cuts it back to the middle of the field. And he's taken out by Caden Stearns. He's at 7.6 a carry on the day. Maybe if the Bills had run the ball a little more, this game would look a lot different, honestly. Because there wouldn't be all those turnovers. Obviously, they're killing us on the ground. Dawson Knox in and out of his hands. I think that was actually Dalton Kincaid. If that was Kincaid, then, you know, no wonder he hasn't been in the game. Second and ten. Handoff to Harris. Brought down Devin Bush. Good tackle. Third and six. Third down from the 42. The Denver defense looking to get yet another stop. Maybe another turnover. Allen throwing. Running from Baron Browning who makes the hit. It falls incomplete. It's fourth down Bills. The Bills have to punt, and the Broncos take over yet again. From the 28, it is going to be a handoff to Javante Williams. Breaks a Matt Milano tackle, but not an Alex Singleton tackle. Second and eight from the 30. Tannehill will be throwing here, looking for Montrell Washington. Perfect accuracy, but out of reach. P. Ryan has checked into the game. Third and eight. So I'll be throwing for Washington, and it's just really inaccurate from Ryan Tannehill. And almost a pick six, Mac, Matt Milano down at the seven. That is ridiculous, man. Was he under pressure? No, it was a great pocket. He's got good medium accuracies, inaccurate through it right to Matt Milano. Not to mention, Montreal Washington ran into Matt Milano and was slow anyway. So I think even if this is accurate, it's probably getting picked just because that's my luck, you know? Well, the Bills with an opportunity to get back into this game since the Broncos offense is on the struggle bus. It's a handoff to Harris. And falling into the end zone on the first play, the Bills answer, touchdown, Damian Harris. The Bills going to make it 20-17 to back to a field goal game. Denver takes over. Still a minute 43 left in the third quarter. And I'll dump it off to Javante Williams quickly. Can't break a tackle. Pickup of two. Dulcich is back in the game after the minor injury. Now on second down, we'll throw for Washington. It was really inaccurate, apparently, from Tannehill, but it was complete, so third and short. Third and short now for Denver. Notoriously terrible in these spots. Tannehill on a keeper. Has good blocking in front of him and apparently does not know how to slide down at the 46. That brings the third quarter to a close. Denver up 20-17 to despite the struggles on offense. First and 10 from the 46 to start the fourth quarter as Pirine fumbles... And McGlinchey falls on it and is brought down at the 49. Second and seven. Smaj P. Ryan almost making a massive mistake there. I mean, he did make a massive mistake. He's just lucky that Mike McGlinchey fell on it. As we'll go back to Javante Williams and the run blocking just not there. Third and seven. Alex Singleton has like a billion tackles right now. Third and seven from the 49. Looking for Dulcich again. Terribly inaccurate for Ryan Tannehill. He is throwing this game away. What can I do differently? Like genuinely in the comments, like give me some tips, man. I don't want to use the accuracy passing because I think it takes away from the purpose of the rebuild for the players themselves to be good and not just me to be good. Great pocket, all kinds of time to throw. 
you know, a fairly open Greg Dulcich. I mean, if this hits him where it's supposed to hit him, I think this is a reception and a completion. Uh, instead, it's it's inaccurate for no reason. And yeah, I mean, quarterbacks miss throws, man. But Ryan Tannehill honestly maybe needs to be benched. But it's like is, Jarrett Stidham's not going to be any better. It's not really Tannehill's fault. It's the game's fault. Josh Allen makes that throw somehow. Dawson Knox down to the 16. We're definitely losing this game. First and 10 from the 16 for the Bills. Can the Broncos defense play any better, really? And that is going to be a touchdown for Stephon Diggs and the Bills. For the first time in a long time, have a lead in this football game. I don't know what to do. I mean, we have to be able to throw the ball sometimes. First and 10. Play action. Looking for Mims. It's actually accurate and it's complete to the young wide receiver. Out at the 41. A big play on first down. Sets up, Dem sets up Denver from the Bills 41. Just no running room. Second and eight from the 39. Tannehill will be throwing here. Judy open across the middle and has it at the 20. He has not been very involved today. Maybe needs to be involved a little more. I am just terrified to throw the ball, really, is the problem. From the 19, P. Ryan on the carry meets Singleton at the 15 and goes down. Second and six. The running game has just not been there today. Specifically, honestly, for Javante Williams. Dulcich makes the grab. Can he punch it in? He can. Touchdown, Broncos. I mean, offense looked really easy on that drive. It's looked very difficult every other drive, but that took, what, four or five plays for the Broncos to get down the field. Greg Dulcich gets another touchdown on the season, and Denver retakes the lead. We've got ourselves a game, folks. First and 10 from the 25 for the Bills. Can they answer after Denver was able to do so very easily? Damien Harris on the carry. 92 yards on 13 rushes is so bad. Bad for us, obviously. Fantastic for him. Terrible for us. Second and five after the carry from the 30. It's a carry to him again. Doesn't get much this time. A pickup of one. It sets up third down. Third and four. Allen in an empty set from the 31. Can he manage to convert? Throws quickly. Knocks on the reception. Steps out of bounds. Would have had a touchdown otherwise. At the 42, go the Bills. That's completely my bad. I, I switched on to Damari Mathis and took him off his line. I, I think that was going to be a completion anyway. Because it looked like he had a step, but I screwed it up a little bit more. So that's incomplete. I try not to switch on typically, but occasionally I will. Second and 10 from the 42. Got Diggs in the slot area there. And that's a throw for Knox, which is incomplete. Third down and 10. I want to say like two of the three Josh Allen picks have been thrown on the third down. We make it four. Looking down the field for Diggs, knocked away by Pat Sertan. That is a huge deflection. The Bills are setting up for a field goal, a very long one, with the field goal power sliders now turned down to 45. This is not automatic. It's still good, just barely it is good. Tyler Bass makes the field goal. It is a tie game. First and 10 from the 25 for Denver. Nobody blocks Matt Milano. Javante Williams gets nothing. I feel like if I send that same blitz, my linebacker just gets picked up, but not for the CPU. Play action. Throwing, looking for Judy. Another huge blitz. I should have faked the play action. Third and 10. Denver needing a conversion here. And it's not going to happen. That's a sack. Everyone was so well covered. I could have given it a try, but didn't want to throw the pick. Broncos punted away. And leave it in the hands of their defense. Four and a half, 445 left to play from the 33. Allen throwing incomplete for Stephon Diggs. Pat Sertan has been all over it today. Second and 10 from the 33. What can Josh Allen pull off? Firing left side for Davis. Knocked away. That's Damari Mathis in coverage. Third down and 10. The Denver defense looking to get yet another stop. From the 33, Allen looking to throw, running out of time, getting chased by Jones, and Clark throws it away. And the Bills probably punting here. Honestly, the Broncos have an opportunity to kill this clock and just kick a field goal to win. Oh my god, not if we can't run the ball. Matt Milano, the best linebacker in the NFL, evidently. Tyler Beatty is checked into the game. Second and 10 from the 26. It's another run, this time to Beatty. 
holds on to the ball. The running game is just working better with anyone not named Javante Williams. Beatty will stay in the game. And on third and two, from the 34, Beatty on the carry, meets Singleton and gets the first. Von Miller is injured. Haven't seen a ton of him today. Beatty remaining in the game now. First and 10 from the 36. It's a handoff to him. Cuts it back the other way and has a pickup of three. Samaj P. Ryan back in the game. Second and seven. It's a carry for him. He doesn't get very far. It's going to be third and five. Third down and five. Denver desperately needs a conversion here. Looking for Dulcich. He's not going to have the first. It's fourth and two from the 45. Fourth and two. Denver is lined up to go for it. What do we have to lose? We are two and six on the season. We're trying to get a dub. I do not want to play for overtime by giving the ball back. Taking the snap, looking to throw. Throwing for Mims. He comes down with the catch. The Bills sent a huge blitz. Marvin Mims and Ryan Tannehill, they don't care. First and 10 from the 47, Javante Williams is back in the game. After the big first down, it's a carry for him. It's going to be a good run. Dulcich gets two blocks down the field, and we're up to the 30. First and 10. Buffalo, I think, did use a timeout there. From the 29, Pirine's in the game. It's a carry for him. And honestly, just hold on to the ball. Buffalo burns another timeout, so it's second and six. And we are just running this clock down. Javante Williams on the carry. Von Miller saves a first down. Pirine back in the game. Third and one on the carry. Needs a first, gets the first. Buffalo with no timeouts will be unable to ice the kick. So we will just burn this clock down and just hold on to the football with Javante Williams. Garrett Bowles is injured on this play. That's not good. That also forces Denver to use a timeout to stop the clock. So no clock moving on this play. Go back to Javante, and he's able to hold on to the ball. It's going to be third and nine. We will take the clock down to about two seconds left, call a timeout, and let Will Lutz kick a field goal to win the game, hopefully. 33-yarder for Lutz to give Denver the third win on the season. Kick is up. Kick is good. Time expires. Denver wins. 30 to 27, upsetting the Buffalo Bills. What an insane game. Both quarterbacks clearly didn't want to win. Two interceptions from Tannehill, three from Josh Allen. Both of the defenses played insane. 30-27 Broncos take a dub. Only the third win on the season for Denver and against a very unlikely opponent. Josh Allen, 48.9 rating, 263, two touchdowns, three picks. Ryan Tannehill, 65.2 rating, 195, two touchdowns, two picks. Two bad games from two quarterbacks. Rushing the ball, Javante Williams had 26 attempts for 82 yards, 3.1 a carry. It was not good. Samaji Piran was a little better at 4.3 a carry. And Tyler Beatty, six yards a carry, five attempts, 30 yards. I mean, maybe we need to get him the ball a little more. Receiving Dulcich, eight for 75 and a touchdown. Mims had four for 67. Jerry Judy, two for 35, but did have the touchdown. Not a huge day receiving for anyone. I mean, Dulcich had eight receptions, which I guess is massive. Defensively, Caden Stearns led the way with solo tackles and total tackles. Nobody had a tackle for loss, and nobody had a sack, but three people had picks, Justin Simmons, Fabian Moreau, and PS2. And I think this is ultimately what wins us the game, those three interceptions. Fabian Moreau's was a pick six. Caden Stearns and Ben Powers both have upgrades. Caden Stearns, he needs to work on a lot, honestly. We'll give him a run support upgrade. Gives them a lot of stuff. Awareness, block shed, man coverage, play rec, pursuit, tackle, and zone. And then Ben Powers, our young left guard, has an upgrade. And he, oof, needs to work on run blocking really, really bad. Upgrade for him, plus two lead block, plus two run block, plus one run block power. That's pretty big. Well, that does it for this episode. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. This was a really fun one, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, hit that like button. And if you find yourself coming back on the regular, hit that subscribe button. It does help me out a lot. And I am trying to hit 500 by the end of the year. In the next episode, it doesn't get a ton easier as we'll be playing the seven and three minutes. Minnesota Vikings. And we've got a couple things going on. Unstoppable Force and a prospect spotlight. Those prospect spotlights are always really funny, to be honest, as typically it's an absolutely awful player. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode where we'll face off against the Vikings.